Hey guys, what's going on? This is Kevin Moore from Cinema Fellows, and I am here to talk about the last seven movies I've seen in a segment I like to call Seven with Kevin. Now I'm going to start off with Marry Me. Marry Me was a movie that came out in early 2022, which starred Jennifer Lopez and Owen Wilson. It's a very typical, predictable romantic comedy where Jennifer Lopez plays a pop singer, far reach, I know, a pop singer who plans to marry her pop singer fiance on the stage in front of millions while promoting her new single, which is the title of the movie, Marry Me. Unfortunately, it is found out that uh, the boyfriend of the fiance has cheated on her. She breaks it off, but she doesn't want to destroy her career. So she picks a random guy in the audience, and that happens to be Owen Wilson. What starts off as a business transaction, very cold, soon develops into, you know, romance. They fall in love with each other, but she has her career. He basically is kind of a boring math teacher with a daughter who idolizes this lady. Again, you can probably predict where the story goes. Again, it's harmless. It's not bad. Owen Wilson and Jennifer Lopez are both good individually. And as a couple, they have more of a cutesy chemistry than like a sexual one. But, you know, considering the tone of the romantic comedy they're in, it's fine. And I'm giving this one two and a half out of five. Wow. Owen Wilson air pieces. If you don't know, Liam Neeson is going to be doing The Naked Gun. They're going to reboot The Naked Gun. And it's pretty perfect for him because over the last 14 years, he's been doing the same thing over and over again since Taken in 2009, a film that I love, a film that had made my list back then for the best of 2009. He is basically stuck to the same thing since then. Uh, I don't blame him. He's probably getting pretty good payouts for, for these films. You know, they're not really that expensive to make. They're pretty much, you know, base, something you'd see on like... Um, Netflix or, you know, back in the day, Showtime, they're Showtime action movies. But, you know, most of these things don't work. Most of these things don't work because you don't have skilled directors like the guy who directed Taken, whose name escapes me for right now. And these two movies, first is Blacklight. Blacklight is a movie about Neeson. He is working for a government agency who silences people who are getting too comfortable, start rebellions, basically people who do not fall in line with what the government wants us to do. And soon after he starts to find out, okay, maybe this agency I'm working for isn't, you know, they're not full of good people. And he starts to kind of rebel, but also he's basically, he has a character trait of losing his memory. And he has a pretty sour relationship with his estranged daughter and his granddaughter who he loves and the granddaughter loves him. That relationship between the granddaughter and him is one of the highlights of the film. It's very sentimental. Nisi can do that very well. But the political aspect of this movie really doesn't go anywhere. You know, you have a hotshot news reporter trying to break the story. You have people trying to help Nisi understand like, these guys are bad. But it's dull. There's really no action in it until the last probably 20 minutes of the film. And, you know, it's it's just not a good movie. It's It's kind of boring. And I'm going to give this, unfortunately, one and a half out of five Liam Neeson hair pieces. Now, the next one, also starring Neeson, is Memory. And this one is directed by Martin Campbell. Martin Campbell directed Casino Royale and uh, Goldeneye, both fantastic Bond movies. You have, haven't seen them. Here, he once again gives the character trait of memory loss to Liam Neeson, but it's done a little more, um, a little better here. And here he's taking down child pedophiles, child predators, you know, the rich and their disgusting ways. Some of the rich, I'm not going to say all the rich. More competent director. Uh, you got Guy Pierce here playing an ally. You got Ray Stevenson, who was just casted in some Star Wars TV show coming out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Stevenson's role really isn't that big. He's kind of just playing a character of a disgruntled police officer. But I liked him. He was very convincing. He was enjoyable to watch. Guy Pierce is doing some nice work. Uh, there is a lot more action in this one. It is more engaging than Blacklight. But, you know, it's just, it's predictable. It's down the road. It's something that you'll probably see made fun of in the Naked Gun series. You know, I'm looking forward to that one. That one's either going to be a home run or it's going to completely fall flat in his face. But I have uh, faith in Neeson. Neeson can do comedy. He was in an episode of Atlanta. He did a stint in Ted. Kind of parrying this character that he's always playing. 
So I'm looking forward to it. But memory, I am giving two and a half out of five Liam Neeson hair pieces. Okay, so the next film I am going to talk about moves away from the action genre and more into the romance and you no know, character drama of uh, Paris back in the day. I say the 50s or 40s, and this is Miss Harris Goes to Paris. Stars Leslie Manville, who is playing Miss Harris. Her husband died in the war. She's down on her luck. She's struggling financially. Her dream, though, is to go to Paris and obtain an original designed by her Christian Dior dress. Okay, if you haven't skipped ahead to the, the next review, uh, you know, because the subject matter may not be for you. It's fashion. But, you know, this movie was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It's fluff. It's... It's, you know, it's an, it's an enjoyable Saturday afternoon movie. Uh, the production di design is great. The costume design, which I know they had to bring it because this whole entire plot revolves around fashion. Leslie Manville's Miss Harris is kind of like Paddington Bear. Wherever she goes, she brings joy and um, glee. She goes to Paris. She runs into a few people who are either depressed, obsessed with themselves, greedy, negative character traits and she kind of brings her sunlight into their their lives and again Leslie Manville is fantastic you got Jason Isaacs from Harry Potter here playing a bookie at a horse racing track and kind of like a love interest to her and I liked this film it was it was very easy to watch and I'm giving this one three and a half out of five Miss Harris Christian Dior hair pieces now the next one the Rock and I have a very complicated relationship. He is either an actor who can bring his energy into a film and make it extremely enjoyable, or he is an actor who can completely can completely bring down a project because of the size of his size of his ego, which is probably the size of his arms. Now, when he's with Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart kind of balances him out. I feel like his Kevin Hart brings the comedy to the seriousness of Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock. Here in Super Pets, DC Super Pets, they work well with each other, just as well as they did in Jumanji. In this story, you have the Superman story, which is the same. Everyone knows the Superman story. But in this one, you have Crypto, the dog, family dog, jumping in the pod with Kyle and going to Earth. And uh, Joel basically says, you know, take care of him. And now, you know, back on Earth, you have the same story that everyone knows about Superman, Clark Kent working at the paper, being love of Lois Lane, but he has his canine friends who has, is as powerful as he is, and they solve mysteries together. Then the force, evil force comes. It all unfolds in a predictable way. It's fun. It's a very light kids movie. You have some great supporting performances. The cast here is stacked. It is a stacked cast. I'll just say Keanu Reeves is a pretty good Batman. Kevin Hart's a good sidekick. Uh, Vanessa Bayer is one of the pets in their super gang. She plays a pig. I thought I enjoyed her a lot. And the villain is played by Kate McKinnon, who, you know, Kate McKinnon's great. I enjoy Kate McKinnon a lot. Again, harmless film. The kids will love it. And adults will enjoy the Easter eggs. If you are a DC comic book fan, you will see a lot of Easter eggs here and a lot of jabs, very friendly jabs at the property. And I'll give them this one three out of five. Dwayne Johnson hair pieces? <laughs> All right, so the next one is a murder mystery that takes place back in the day. It is more of a parody of the murder mystery genre, specifically Agatha Christie. It stars Saoirse Ronan, who has been nominated for four Oscars, and Sam Rockwell, who won one Oscar for the three billboards outside of Edmond, Missouri. Great film if you have not seen it. Here they play a detective and a junior detective who must solve the case of a murder within a theater. Adrian Brody pops up here. Um, Ruth Wilson from The Affair pops up here. It's okay. It's middle of the road. I think it could have been a lot more cinematic in the hands of another director. It's kind of boring to watch. It's just very stagey besides a few scenes where they utilize split screens. And the killer reveal isn't memorable. I kind of like, like, oh yeah, he was in the movie. I forgot. Uh, but you have Ronan and you have Rockwell both turning in performances that are great. They both work, uh, work well with each other. Middle of the road stuff, you know, if you see it on HBO Max or or Amazon Prime, it's one of those two. 
you know, check it out if you have nothing to do, if you like Ronin and Rockwell. But again, nothing crazy. Two and a half out of uh, five Sam Rockwell hair pieces. Every year, there is a movie where it is being, it's pumped up through the year. This is it. This is going to be the big Oscar player. Look at the director. Look at the stars. Look at the writer. It's a, you know, it's a no-lose scenario. We're, we're going to be hearing best actor for this person, best actor for this person, best film, best director. You know the drill. And every year, a movie like that flops or comes out and it underwhelms. And I'm sorry to say, 2022's version of that film was Amsterdam. It took me a while to watch this movie, and that's very surprising because I'm a fan of David Russell. I thought Silver Lion's playbook was great. I liked American Hustle. The fighter was fantastic, and I even liked Joy. But this one is just, it misses on every every account. You have Margot Robbie, you have Christian Bale, and you have one of the main reasons I'm not going to score this as low as I wanted to, John David Washington. John David Washington is up there against those two, Robbie and Bale, and a bunch of other people again this like this movie like dc pets is stacked with cast you know every scene there's a new actor they're like oh my god he's in this he's in this she's in this but it's not enough to make a good movie the story is not engaging it's about the underbelly and the dirtiness of america you know how things get covered up the rich get away with a lot but it's just it's not engaging it's boring it's the style which david russell is known for it doesn't mesh well with this story I think in any other director and writer's hands, it could have been something interesting, but it's all over the place. It wants to be a comedy, it wants to be historic. It's not a good comedy. It's too slapstick. The acting is all over the place. You know, the acting is okay. They're not terrible. You know, that's, you know, Bale is Bale. You know how Bale is. Robbie is good. And again, John David Washington is great. You know, keeping up pace with all these actors, but it's just, it's a mess. It's a big mess. And I just didn't enjoy it at all. I just, it, just just forget about it, David Russell, and move on. You know, don't beat it, beat anyone up because of this movie and all the shit it received. You'll bounce back, buddy. But I'm sorry, man. I'm gonna have to give this two out of five David or Russell hair pieces. Did you agree with any every review I had? Maybe you loved Amsterdam. Maybe you're sitting there like maybe you didn't get it. Maybe you loved um Blacklight. You're like, oh Kev, stop with stop with the movie critic stuff. Blacklight's a great movie. I, I, I can't really imagine anyone saying that, but, you know, let me know in the comments below, come to the site. You know, we're always updating with new video reviews. Logan and Henry are on it like that. Also tune on to our podcast. We'll expand on those reviews. I want to know what some of the other guys saw this movie, even though we do text each other, you know, tune on to our podcast because we do have interesting talks about everything from what we've seen, what we think about what's coming out and everything in between. But for today, I am concluding with that movie. And as we say in the site, cheers.